understood. Bertie hardened her heart against him. What would you have me do first? Ariel asked with a stilted bow. Go find me a quad shot cappuccino. <laughs> Bertie turned her back on him, as clear a signal as any that she no longer considered him a threat. Well, first, there are, there are a few criteria we have for the books we choose. Um, and the primary among those is, do we love it? Because if we don't love it, by the time we're done, these are such an intensely, labor, such labor-intensive pieces. If we don't love it when we start, we're going to hate it by the time we're, we're done. But loving it, we want to give it full honor. Uh, we've stated many times our first goal is to please the original author. We want to honor what the author has created. We also want to bring it to life in a way that will just delight and enrich the inner life of the listener. We consider this a genuine art form. Actually, we consider it a new art form, which is very exciting. I mean, how often in your life do you get to create a, a new art form? You know, it's, it's interesting. When I was reading the lines for Bertie's mother, I was hearing the actresses of the silver screen. You know, very melodramatic, but also graceful and elegant and eloquent as well. I've been sheep. I've been a pid Bronx pigeon. Uh, you name it. It is so much fun to come to this group and just see all the dynamics. You watch it come together as you're here. You know, I, I am a voice actress, so I do a lot of projects. And there aren't a lot of projects where you actually get to witness the whole piece, everything come together as one, uh, like you do with full cast audio. You know, you actually get to go through the rehearsal process. You hear the whole book. You know, you hear it in your head when you read the different, the different scripts. But to actually hear other people, even if it's completely different than what you pictured in your head, it just comes to life. I'm the voice of Moth, one of the hyperactive, cake-loving fairies in, from A Midsummer Night's Dream. You just imagine these characters almost as, as cartoons, you'd think. They're, they're just so hyper and all over the place. You'd think of like them being little squirrels with wings or something. Kind of like a... a little kid on helium, I guess. You have to work vocally harder and harder and harder. Um, almost have to be shout. The production will be transported, etc. Um, At the first rehearsal, when the four actors playing the four fairies from A Midsummer Night's Dream, these are characters in a book which are characters from Shakespeare which are really reimagined uh, in, in essentially by this extraordinarily talented author. I'd had some anxiety about these fairy voices working because I wondered, will I have to modulate four voices? That will be very technically uh, laborious. Uh, will I find three enough, three male voices that are varietous enough to be distinct from each other? And on top of that, will I find actors with the talent to do this? When I realized that there was nothing to worry about, I heard their voices and I said to myself silently, it's going to work. And my wow moment, I had one later that went beyond that when particular line readings of one of these, call them my fairy actors, would give just an inspired line reading um, which had the shape of what I had in my head but which was so, so much more accurate or more enjoyable than even I imagined. Those are wow moments. With every production that I direct. I'm living out a childhood fantasy. When I was, I think, eight years old, I saw Leonard Bernstein conducting the New York Philharmonic on television. And I'd never seen anything like it before. I think one of his cufflinks flew off. His feet left the floor. And I was mesmerized by it. I don't remember what the symphonic music was, but what I did was I, I asked for LP records of Leonard Bernstein conducting, and my parents gave them to me. And then I would put them on the record player in my room, close the door, and I would pantomime conducting the New York Philharmonic, bringing up the celli and slowing this one down and glowering at the brass section. Drag that out. Othello and 
and Rosalind, so your alarm, the alarm bells start ringing there, and then when he... The first time I cr uh, directed an audiobook for full cast, I immediately, that experience came back to me. That sensation came back to me. And I realized, I had a very emotional moment where I realized that I was living out one of my most profound childhood fantasies. And that my career would now depend on me living that fantasy as fully as possible uh, each time we produced an audiobook. See his eyes. If I tell you to dance a jig, you will. If I ask you to mop the floors with your tongue, you will. Is that quite clear? Yes. He lifted his eyes to meet hers. Was the color really necessary? Bertie gestured to the pages that littered the stage. You tell me, Ariel. There's another reason I think audiobooks are important, and that is that we are, as a culture, often losing the ability to listen, to absorb, to be lost in a piece of literature. When you and your child listen together in the car, you're having a shared literary experience unlike any other. The story unrolls for you and your co-listener together. It's different even than when you're, doing, when you're both reading the same text for like a, a reading club. You experience it together. And you have this shared literary experience that act not, not only deepens the bond with the literature because you talk about it with each other, but it deepens the bond you have with the other person. I did. I posted the call for everyone. Good. And it's a way... I did. I posted the call. So you know you've, you know you've made a big mistake. Who would think that? Gertrude said with a sniff. Just because you've performed for the queen. I am the queen. No. I'm the queen. I know Hamlet isn't new, but we're going to restage it. Even more confusion. Argument in madness, thoughts, and remembrance fitting. I just feel enormously lucky to have hooked up with um, a world where I'm at ease and where what I love to do and comes naturally to me is appreciated. I mean, how much more could you ask? The heart is bigger than the fist. There are no bad hair days with forecast. This is going to be the best summer we've ever had. I wasn't just saying that. I believed it.